Hi everyone, Samit Halvadia, CTO here at Remo3, and I am joined by Steve Hoinch, who is the Frontline Services Manager, UIS at the University of Cambridge. So uh, welcome to the, I guess, video podcast, whatever we want to call it, Steve. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. So this is this is one of the things that uh, that I'm always really excited about when you start looking at kind of the top universities in the world. Obviously, you've got your Oxfords, you've got your Cambridges, you've got your Harvards. They're always focused on innovation across all aspects of academia, right? You start thinking about the types of research projects, the types of grants, but that doesn't just apply to the student body and the faculty. It really kind of extends beyond that because in order to remain a world-class kind of cutting edge university or educational institution, you need great technology, you need great IT, you need great uh, distribution, all those different pieces. Um, have you have you kind of found that to be the case? Because what would be great for us to kind of understand is, you know, at University of Cambridge, what's your role and, and, and kind of what are some of the strategic things that you guys are working on to, to keep that brand uh, as elite as possible? So I'm Steve Hoynch, so I'm Head of Frontline Services at the University of Cambridge. Um, the university is a very fragmented organization, so it has a lot of local departments doing IT, um, and that has evolved over many years. And the whole point of this, um, well, really, the strategy that I've got going forward is trying to look at a way to harmonize the every department across the University of Cambridge and start looking at trying to deliver commodity off-the-shelf solutions. So the university has been very good in the past at in-house development, um, which obviously then leads to things like technical debt in the future. So we're now looking at what other organizations are doing across the, um, the, the, the field. So, you know, we're looking to big business instead of just other universities to decide what they're doing. You know, we're talking to key partners like yourself, um, but also things like Microsoft and what they do in this space. So one of the key deliveries that I'm trying to deliver at the moment is a managed desktop environment for the sure. whole of the University of Cambridge. And if you imagine there is 150 departments and 31 colleges, and they have all been doing their own thing over the past, we are now looking at how we can deliver a central service to all of these departments. So it's quite challenging, but um, you know, it's, it's going to keep me busy for many years to come. Uh, but I think... <laughs> Now with the solutions that are on the market and we're all starting to work hybridly, um, you know, there's some key solutions that are out there on the market. And obviously Remo3 is going to be part of that journey for us. So, yeah, it's a really interesting time. It, it, it really is. And you, you kind of touched on something um, really briefly there where you talked about the fact that, you know, you have a fragmented, fractured, I call them fiefdoms. Everyone wants their own little fiefdom inside of IT. And this has been a tried and true story. Oh, you know, inside of financial services, dude, we're wealth management. We generate revenue. Don't worry about retail. That's not the same as us. We're special, right? Um, and it becomes very difficult, especially as people start devolving in terms of the directions that they're going to, to build their own lines of businesses. What was kind of the impetus to bring it all back under, under one strategy, right? So that's, that's piece one of the question. And then the second piece, which is quite interesting, you touched on the fact that you're not just going back to academia to look mm -hmm. at their strategy, but I've heard a lot of organizations are moving away from the proprietary technical debt. Let me roll my own. Uh, let me build my own custom develop thing when they have COTS applications or commercial off the shelf solutions that would still allow them to achieve their outcomes, but without the debt, put the onus back on the ISV, the, the vendor that's creating the software and still do what you need from a technical, um, you know, customization perspective. So the two questions really are kind of focused on, okay, great. What was the impetus to start bringing a unified desktop management and managed services around desktop management strategy uh, across the university? And what drove the build versus buy? Yes. Yeah. I hate, I hate to bring up the pandemic again, but it's always a key. Indication. It's fair. It's a historical item. I mean, it, is, it did it drive is. a lot of behavior. Um, so, so what I would say is obviously with everybody then deciding to go hybrid very quickly because nobody could come to the office, 
Um, you then found that big business, sort of like Microsoft, the you know the 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 way that Teams evolved to allow us to have conversations or Zoom. Um, you know those type of innovations and people being more exposed to the way that IT could truly deliver. You know. Um, uh, a different way of working than what they've been used to and and the innovation of change as well because over that pandemic time the the I have never seen IT um be driven so hard across the university and enable people to work in different ways the university trying to deliver a desktop across the whole of um the university of cambridge estate is the commodity IT and that's how we're selling it the boring is what the central IT is trying to deliver and, and, you know, we, we I, I always joke that there used to be exchange engineers as, as a career. That doesn't really exist anymore because people are taking services like software as a service or platform as a service. Um, Microsoft now, for us, we have a 365 agreement. They run the whole of our email backend. That is yeah. no longer a job that is really done in departments or business. And that has been outsourced to a third party. So... You know, taking that aspect and then talking about desktop delivery, that isn't really exciting as it used to be. Um, you know, you have um, products like Intune that allow you to remote manage most devices. Um, and having those type of services where an Intune managed device comes from the center, it means that the local IT officer that's in a department like, I don't know, chemistry or pharmacology, they can do the more bespoke stuff that central IT can't. So, you know, yeah. they can the researchers and that cutting edge you know research that we need to be able to deliver at the edge um, and the center delivers the you know the the network the the speed the wireless and um, the security level but then the researcher can really get on and do the really complicated exciting it while we deliver the boring so you know I, I joke about it, but you know, uh, I, I see my way as, as 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 that's my future career, delivering the boring IT. So that makes that makes two of us because <laughs> believe it or not, you know that that's exactly it. What what I'm trying to do with the Remote Three platform and us as an organization is really we call it automate the mundane. You yes. call it deliver the boring, yes. and yeah. you know it's the guts and the backbone of things that just need to be done. It doesn't mean that they're sexy or they're fun, but it is something that will actually enable the business. Right to your point, if we can get you eighty percent of the way there with your delivery of your network, your infrastructure, all of those different pieces, let the I'll call them IT CTOs of each different department. Take them that last mile. If you need mentor graphics for your engineering department with heavy machinery and Unix, go for it, right? Like that, that's absolutely different than being able to deliver Windows 365 or Office 365 or, or the infrastructure. So it, it's really interesting that you guys are kind of breaking it up that way where it's really around, let me get you the strategy and the infrastructure that you need to support you. And you take it kind of that last mile, which we've actually started seeing in quite a few uh, private organizations, Steve, where like in banks, you'll have a wealth management CTO, but everything that they're able to get and the infrastructure and persistent environments are set up are delivered by a central IT body. What they to choose to do and, uh, and tune at the very last second, it is absolutely up to them to make sure that it's fit for purpose in the business. So uh, it seems like you're completely aligned with the private sector as well, which is which is good to see. Just another question around that, right? Like taking on that commodity and delivery, whether it's application management, whether it's desktop delivery, um, it's still a big undertaking, right? Convincing people that you are commoditizing IT infrastructure delivery and desktop delivery. What was it that, you know, I mean, you talked about COVID, but COVID and the pandemic in general is one thing. I think one of the things that we saw is that the businesses typically saw that with IT able to scale with the tech that's out there, like AVD, for instance, and buying more Citrix licenses or buying more physical hardware, businesses were astounded at the fact that IT was flexible enough and innovative enough to be able to support a hybrid work style without building a four-year business case for it like you used to do for VDI. Do you, do you find that it's brought kind of more flexibility for you to design this 
Remo3 cloud-driven solution around desktop delivery, or do you feel that you've had to jump through that same type of business case okay. justification? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd say that the trust that existed because of what happened during the pandemic meant yeah. that people, and, and let alone the users, but the business could see the benefits and how IT could be trusted to deliver in the times of, you know, um, massive change. And, that, and that's what we're seeing now. So projects like this um, do get green lit a lot easier. Um, okay. And, and they're, they're an easier sell to the organization to say these are the benefits that we can clearly deliver. Um, so I think I think that has definitely helped. Um, one thing I would say, and you touched on it a minute ago, was um, you know it's a, it's a massive undertaking. I'd say the desktop estate is not the hardest part of the delivery. The actual when when you actually look at it, it's the application estate that's actually the hard part, and that often gets underlooked. Um, and I have delivered many different desktop estates in the past, including one on Citrix. And you can get that Citrix environment up very quickly, but then as you start going to departments, you suddenly realize that the hard graft is actually on the application delivery, the packaging, um, making sure it works, all those type of things. So that is, you know, Intune, for example, you can get that operationing very quickly and start giving it out to people. But if there's no applications, it's 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 pretty much a um, you know you, you've got a machine with just Office on there. So, and, and that that's one of the reasons why Remo three is going to be handy with the journey that we're going on at the university. That's great to hear because you know I've always felt, but I'm biased. I'm an app nerd, right? By by definition, for the last twenty years, I've always felt that people focused heavily, whether it was you know VDI, whether it was DAS, Cloud PC, um, Cloud VDI, AVD slash Windows three sixty five. Those are the terms for Microsoft. The workspace was always the primary thing in the spotlight. I'm going to deliver a persistent, performant workspace. But to your point, you know, it's going to have Chrome, Edge, mm -hmm. Teams, and Office. I don't know about the rest of my apps, right? So it, it's really refreshing to hear that you guys are taking an apps first strategy and the workspace delivery is just a means to be kind of that storefront to allow people to be productive with their apps. Um, you you just touched on the fact that's so that's great to hear. You just touched on the fact that Remo3 was looked at because you guys were thinking of using the apps first lens to, to take this journey. What is that journey going to ultimately look like? How far along have you gotten um, versus what what does the end goal look like for you? Yeah, so so I'd say I say we're quite early in the Remo three journey. Um, yeah. We've obviously um, we, we we you know we're deploying applications that type of thing. Uh, the biggest um, challenge for me was going into a department and being given 150 apps that we'd never seen before. I have no idea how to actually support them. Um, you know, it, it's one thing to be given a scientific application and get that thing running, but the other thing is how do we know that the application is actually usable that it has the right modules installed all those type of things so um but also the fact that you can end up with an it department that is just literally packaging applications all day every day so as we started to deliver to some departments we suddenly realized as our application list went well over 200 applications we were in this regular cadence of just patching the same application over and over again, just to keep it within a security window. Um, and the, the team that were patching applications, you know, went from two people to three people, to four people, to five people, just dedicated on application patching. One of the reasons why Remo3 was chosen was the ability that we are going to be able to, you know, get the end user to be able to basically test that application for us in a cloud environment prove yeah. that that application works before it's even published to them within any of the stores. Um, you know, that that is a massive change for us, but also the fact that I'm now not needing six or seven people to package applications. This is something that the Remo product can, I can actually give this application to a junior member of the team or a member of the service desk to start deploying applications. And it will run through that I say cookie cutter style process for each application. So if we need to update a single application, we just rerun it through the Remo3 product and it either does a pass or a fail. If it's a fail, it can go to a 
more experienced team, but most of the applications will run through and then we can publish them directly via Intune or another publishing um, way. So it means that I'm actually able to access people within the team that wouldn't be able to deploy applications without a lot of training. Um, but it also gives me a way to test applications that IT departments don't know if they're going to work or if they are actually working in, a, in, in the correct way. We can push that to a researcher to say, this is the application, it works. I need you now to test this before we publish it to the rest of the university. So it is, it is for us, it is going to be a game changer and it is going to be part of our narrative for the desktop delivery going forward. That's so refreshing and exciting to hear, Steve, because you know we're well known for helping people migrate, right? So the migration story is a big part of our value proposition. If you want to move off of Citrix or you want to move from Windows 10 to Windows 11, you want to move to AVD, you want to move to MSIX or adopt new formats, that story for us is, is a no-brainer, right? Um, it's, it's about scale, it's about compressed time to value, and it's about making the most that you can with the resources that you have available. And you, you've kind of touched on it from an interesting other perspective, which is our second value prop, um, which is around helping you enable change through automation, right? So patching new versions of applications, patching new builds in the OS, right? And being able to use resources that not, might not be subject matter experts around the applications or even packaging for that matter, but still being able to leverage a pipeline that's going to give you a data-driven, automation-driven approach to give you the fact that, is this application going to work? Of course, then you want to give it to a, a, an SME and, and help facilitate the user acceptance testing prior to broad deployment. But the use case that you guys are starting with is not, I need to move from SCCM to Intune for all 200 apps. You're starting with, holy cow, change is happening so quickly that every time I have to deploy a new version of an OS or an app, I want to run it through the pipeline. Correct. And, and, and I know that's a different model than most people come into. Um, yeah. But that, that was that that was one of the benefits of the Remo 3 tool. It was the fact that I can I didn't have a selection of pre-built nice applications to migrate from. I'm yeah. building as Intune WIM files from day one. So, you know, we're, we're using this tool to really just allow more and more people across the organization. So, you know, the delegated manner is that I could actually give um, some of these pipelines to local COs in departments. They can publish through those applications, test them. It still then comes back to me to publish them via Intune. Sure. Um, but, but it does mean that we can really start to delegate out the building of the applications and the responsibility to other people around the organization. And that and that's that's handy when you've got 150 of them or 31 colleges to deal with. So it's the it's the final mile, Steve. That's exactly what we're talking about again, right? So we're we're getting you 85% of the way there. And then for the final mile, let them do the let them do that what they do best, which is understand their apps and whether or not it's it's fit for purpose. So it's great to kind of see that, you know, you're looking at this as a long-term, would you say it's going to be part of your kind of standard operating uh, procedure for change enablement? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, so, uh, okay. yeah, I think I think we have, you know, we've committed to the Intune platform as a direction. Awesome. And, then it, it, uh, and then Remo 3 is the application delivery side of things. So the two going hand in hand are going to mean that I can roll this out across the university in a in a much faster timeline than I was expecting before. And and with less staff at the center as well, so it's 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 going to be a truly benefit beneficial um, tool that we're going to be running within UIS. That's great to hear, and I mean we've talked about this, and in fact, if you're part of these chatter groups in the end user community, the end user compute community, everyone's been talking about this concept of the democratization of IT. Um, but no one can give me a firm example of where it's actually worked properly um, or done at scale, right? That's not, let me take a step back. It has worked, but it hasn't worked at scale for a lot of organizations across 150 departments, for instance. Maybe you'll have two or three departments that absolutely embrace this new world of democratization of IT. Um, what has your experience been as you're selling it to the departments? Have there has there been pushback about this concept of having them take it the final mile and you you, you do the first uh, 25 of the marathon for them? It's hard for me to say, really. I think I think 
as soon as you show the benefits to the end user or, or, or the local um, computer officer, what these, you know, what, what the delivery can be and, and the time that it will free up to the, to those organizations and the monetary value that they will save. Um, yeah. Departments start looking at this in a completely different way. I think the fact that it then frees them up um, to do like we were talking about earlier, the more exciting levels of IT, because let, let's be honest, there is IT is so vast. And, and you know, it, the, the fact that those end users, instead of running their own Active Directory or their own, you know, desktop solution or SSCM or endpoint management, whatever it will be, they can actually start transitioning themselves to supporting the more bespoke research requirements or, you know, the end user will see a better support because they're not reinventing the wheel time and time again. Um, you know, the department clearly sees a saving um, just on the amount of time that things are able to be delivered at scale. So an example was, you know, um, Windows 10 to Windows 11. I remember going, you know, from Windows 7 to Windows 10 and the size of the organization and everybody left it till the last minute, you know, that ended up being over a year project. Um, yeah. You know, the way we are now and within Tune, we can upgrade somebody's machine from Windows 10 to Windows 11 overnight. And the same thing with the potential of Windows 12 coming down the line, you know. So so and and with Remo 3, we can we can run the pipelines to look at the new versions as well. So we're you know, we can already start looking at will it work on the latest version of or the latest patch of Windows 11? And we can just rerun those pipelines through to make sure the applications are going to work on Windows 12 when it comes out. And that will be a clear benefit to the, to the whole of the organization. So I, I think, I think it's, it's something that slowly is evolving and, and, you know, people are starting to see that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this is going to be a quick thing for the university. You know, this is yeah. probably a 10 year vision to get everybody across um, to start using a single desktop environment. Um, there are a lot of devices here and a lot of people um, that we have to bring on board. But I think every department that we've worked with so far and they can see the benefits and, 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 and understand it and the delegated nature of these tools as well. You know, yeah. um, the fact that the Intune environment that I'm delivering to um, a department means that they can still remote wipe those machines. They can still have local admin rights on those machines. So they still have full control, but I am taking some of the security requirements away, you know, making sure that it meets cyber essentials, um, you know, making yeah. sure that it's backed up. It's, it's um, you know, BitLocker enabled by default and all those type of things. Um, I can make sure that the, the, the profile of that machine is delivered in the correct way. And the same thing with the applications. We can make sure they're tested and they work across all the environment that people can access them from company portal at home and they can install whatever applications they need um, is a massive change to the way IT has been delivered over the, you know, the 20 plus years that I've been involved in IT. And I think it's, um, it's, it's finally come about that we're, we're, we're seeing this change. So it's, it's, it's exciting as well. And I think most IT people are seeing it as a benefit and they're, and yeah. they're seeing excitement. They can actually, you know, these tools are enterprise grade. They're not, like we said earlier, not in-house developed. So they have support, they have training. We're able to start working with other companies like yourself, being partners with them. So we're actually able to um, talk about how the tool works, the roadmaps for these things, you know, and, and you know, a lot of um, companies that we work with like yourself evolve these tools to work in the education space, not just the private sector. So that's yeah. a, you know, that, that that's a that's a great thing to happen you know we're seeing education plus business being taken seriously so it's 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 a wonderful place to be so no i mean it is it's great like to hear things like that because ultimately i mean i, I could not stop smiling when you're talking about rolling your own pipelines because that's that's my terminology we call it pipelines because you're going to have so many unique use cases you want to be ready for windows 12 roll your own pipeline we've got the apis we've got the automation you want to roll out a cve pipeline so for day zero support do it right you want to roll out a pipeline for converting to msix have at it hoss right like it's completely up to you in terms of um you know the flexibility around it 
And they're all boring things. They're all really, really boring, tedious things. But as you start rolling the automation in, you now have the ability to deliver the boring and focus on the innovative with the, the source resources you have. So, Steve, that was absolutely phenomenal. And it was a real pleasure getting a chance to, to sit down and actually talk to you about some of the initiatives, how you see Remo, where we fit into the future plans. And then, you know, ultimately you're a hundred percent right. We, we are, we do see ourselves as a partner in a lot of these journeys. And in fact, you know, if this won't surprise you, but we've started this journey almost five years ago, and we thought WVD was going to change the world, uh, Appetach was going to change the world, and we've been here continuing to build a platform, waiting for IT to catch up, right? And we're starting to see that based on the pandemic, IT kind of grew from being kind of a cost center, this is where we want to cut, uh, cut costs, to being a strategic part of the businesses to say, Oh my gosh, they can scale and support hybrid work styles. They can make sure that we're, you know, we have no downtime. We're doing all these innovative things. I'm sure you guys are working on AI initiatives. You guys are working on additional stuff as well. Let's take all this boring stuff and let automation kind of run those pipelines so that you can focus on the fun. So it's great kind of hearing such a prestigious institution as yourselves, um, kind of taking that same type of approach and and uh, and actually embracing it from an end user perspective. So again, thank you for the time. Thank you for the partnership. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the next couple of years of working together. Okay, thank you very much. It's very, honestly, it's been um, uh, it, it's been an exciting opportunity to work with you guys. I'm 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 also looking forward to the next couple of years and seeing how Remo three develops, and and you know, and the new innovation that we can bring to the University of Cambridge. So thank you very much.